Okay, for the reassembly, we're going to start with the top plate. I'm going to apply a little bit of lubricant to the backup seal. Remember, use a non-silicone lubricant here. Then install the backup seal into the top plate, making sure it's fully seated. Next, install the bearing housing, the bearing, and the retaining ring into the top plate. Okay, we're going to start reassembling the bellows assembly now. First, we're going to lubricate and install the O-ring. Lubricate and install the bellows nut O-ring. Then we're going to slide the bellows onto the bellows sleeve and snap it into place. Then apply some medium strength thread sealer to the inner diameter of the bellows nut. Install the bellows nut and torque between 25 and 30 foot-pounds. To reassemble the throat cartridge, apply lubricant to the O-rings, then install the O-rings onto the lip seal and install the lip seal. Install thread lubricant to the outside threads of the throat nut and thread it onto the cartridge hand tight. Apply lubricant to the cartridge O-ring and install the O-ring onto the cartridge. For the piston assembly, install the two halves of the piston onto the piston seal and snap them together. Apply a high strength thread sealer into the inner diameter of the threads of the piston nut. Then screw the piston rod through the piston and the spacer and into the piston nut. Torque the piston nut between 95 and 100 foot-pounds. For the fluid section, we're going to reinstall the drain plugs into the upper and lower fluid housings. Then we're going to install the pressure relief valve into the upper housing directly across from where the inlet manifold will be attached. Torque the relief valve to 100 inch-pounds. Next, we're going to mount the, the lower fluid housing into a vise. Lubricate the inside of the pump cylinder and install the piston assembly into the pump cylinder by rotating the piston assembly. Place the cylinder gasket into the lower fluid housing using grease to hold it in place. Then place the cylinder into the lower housing. Apply thread lubricant to the outside threads of the throat cartridge and loosely thread into the fluid outlet housing. Place a cylinder gasket into the outlet housing using grease to hold it in place. Install the outlet housing over the piston rod and onto the cylinder. Make sure the inlet and the outlet ports on both housings are aligned. Make sure the lock washers are on the housing bolts, then apply thread lubricant to the bolt threads. Install the bolt through the upper housing and hand tighten into the lower housing. Tighten and torque these bolts uniformly between 40 and 45 foot-pounds. Verify that the two cylinder gaskets are in the proper location and not pinched out. Finally, torque the throat cartridge to the upper housing between 70 and 75 foot-pounds. Then, torque the throat nut between 25 and 30 foot-pounds. Install the O-ring onto the upper fluid housing. Then install the bellows chamber over the piston rod and onto the housing. Make sure the lock washers are on the housing bolts and apply medium strength thread sealer onto the threads of the bolt. Install the four bolts and tighten them uniformly and torque between 35 and 40 foot-pounds. Insert the bellows assembly over the piston rod and into the bellows chamber. 
Then install the bellows o-ring. Align the shape of the backup seal to the bellows sleeve and install the top plate to the bellows housing. Orient the plate to the desired position by rotating the plate in 90 degree increments. With the lock washers in place, apply medium strength thread sealer to the entire length of the threads. Install the bolts, tighten them uniformly and torque between 35 and 40 foot pounds. Apply thread sealant to the threads of the breather valve and install into the breather port on the top plate. Remember the breather valve must be installed so that it remains vertical. Then apply some medium strength thread sealer to the retaining collar screws and install the retaining collar. Torque these screws between 18 and 22 inch pounds. If your model pump uses the check assembly spacer plate, install the plate onto the large portion of the check valve housing. Place a compression spring into the check valve housing. Then place a ball retainer into the spring. Insert the ball into the ball retainer then install the seat over the ball, making sure that the chamfer is facing the ball. Apply some lubricant to the seat gasket and place over the valve seat. Place the valve seat housing on top of the check valve housing with the holes 90 degrees apart. Rotate the parts until the holes line up and lock into place. Lubricate the O-rings and place one on the valve seat housing and one on the check valve housing. Repeat this for all four check assemblies. Apply lubricant to the manifold O-rings, then place the O-ring in the manifold section of the bellows chamber. Apply medium strength thread sealer to the manifold bolts. Install the bolts into the bottom flange of the inlet manifold through an assembled check housing, ensuring that the arrows on the check housing are pointing towards the pump. Repeat this process for the middle flange on the inlet manifold of the pump. Then insert the screws into the top flange. Tighten all of the screws on the fluid manifold uniformly and torque between 25 and 30 foot-pounds. Install the bolts into the bottom flange of the outlet manifold through an assembled check housing, ensuring that the arrows on the check housing are pointing away from the pump. Repeat this process for the top flange of the outlet manifold of the pump. Tighten all of the screws on the fluid manifold uniformly and torque between 25 and 30 foot-pounds.